ബിസ്മില്ലാഹിറബിലാലമീൻ رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والكرام والله عز وجل open the doors of knowledge and wisdom for us have mercy on us oh the one who is the most honorable the most gracious بلغ العلا بكماله كشف الدجا بجماله حسنت جميع خصاله صلوا عليه واله all praises is due to almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the lord of the worlds our sustainer cherisher nourisher our provider the master of the day of judgment the owner initiator and creator of everything that exists abundance of peace blessings and choice of salutations be upon the prophet of rahma the intercessor of the ummah the owner of jannah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam who is resting beneath the illuminous dome in madinatul munawwara may peace and blessings be upon his illustrious family and noble companions ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in welcome back dear viewers and listeners of madina channel to another powerful episode of the series called the early echo please stay tuned to madani channel as per routine yes let us quickly inshallah discuss the virtues and blessings of reciting durud e pak inshallah and thereafter we will move on to the next part of the program which is listening to a nat of rasul akram nur e mujassam sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that will further increase our love and muhabba for rasul e pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam it has been mentioned in regards to the generosity of rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam that a person by the name of sayyid ahmad rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi who was a very devoted personality a great saint of islam after traveling through various jungles various towns and cities finally he reached madinatul munawwara and this great personality presented himself in the court of rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam with his clothes torn with his skin burnt without eating or drinking anything after several weeks and months when he reached madinatul munawwara allahu akbar when he presented himself in the court of rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ya nabi allah i am your guest and you are my host whilst having said this He said, "O Prophet of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, I haven't eaten anything for several days, and I am your guest." After saying this, he began to recite Durud e Pak, and whilst reciting Durud e Pak and Salawat upon the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his eyes closed. Yes, dear viewers, his physical eyes closed, but the eyes of his heart had then opened. That is to say, the spiritual eyes of his heart had opened. His fortune had smiled at him for the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had come into his dream. Though he had dozed off for that little moment, Allahu Akbar, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him in his dream, O oh Ahmad, what has happened to you? Look at your condition. Your clothes has been torn and look at your skin it has peeled off allahu akbar having said this he said ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i am hungry and i am your ummati i am your guest i have come to madinatul munawwara to your court having said this the prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said oh ahmad give me your hand i then raised or given my hands to the prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the dream had given me a dinar Allahu Akbar he says when i had taken the money from the hands of rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam my eyes had opened and i realized that it was just a dream but subhanallah subhanallah 
I seen the very same dinar in my hand, which Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had given to me in my dream. Allahu Akbar. Dear viewers and listeners of Madini channel, there is not one or two, but there are several accounts that speaks about the generosity of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whereas he had blessed someone with abundance of wealth in his dream. And in reality, when he had opened his eyes, he had found that wealth within him. Furthermore, a one companion or one personality was given a roti by Rasul Pak sallallahu in his dream. And when he opened his eyes, half he had eaten in his sleep and the other half was still in his hand. There are numerous blessings of reciting Darood and sending salutations and salams upon the most exalted and celebrated Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the poet had said so beautifully. Main so jao ya Mustafa Kehte kehte khule aakh salle ala Kehte kehte Khule aakh salle ala Kehte kehte Mujhe apni rahmat se Tu apna kar le Tu apna kar le Siwa tere sab se Kinara karu me Kinara karu me Main so jau ya Mustafa Kehte kehte Khule aakh salle ala Kehte kehte Khule aakh salle ala Kehte kehte Tera zikr lab par Khuda dil ke andar Khuda dil ke andar Yuhi zinda gani Guzara karu me Guzara karu me Me soja Ya Mustafa Kehte kehte Khule aakh salle ala Kehte kehte Sallu ala al-habib Sallallahu ala muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Salatu wa salamana alayka ya sayyidi Ya rasulullah Wa sallam alayka ya sayyidi Ya nabi Allah Dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel MashaAllah alhamdulillah This was the blessings and virtues of reciting Darood and sending salutations to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam form this habit that when you close your eyes you should recite a Darood Pak sing the praises of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when you open your eyes remember the most beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah chale aage badhte hain aur ab hum ek pyara sa kalam ki janib jate hain we will listen to this beautiful and amazing Naati Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after which we will continue with our program. Yes, dear viewers, please stay locked to Madani channel as we will return just after this kalam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pyaare nabi, pyaare nabi, pyaare nabi, tira masna dena, موسیقی خدا کی قسم پیارے نبی پیارے نبی جیسا کوئی بھی نہیں پیارے نبی جیسا کوئی بھی نہیں پیارے نبی جیسا کوئی بھی نہیں 
प्यारे नबी जैसा कोई भी नहीं यूसुफ Subhan Allah, Subhan Allah, Masha Allah. This is the truth and reality, and this is our aqida that there was no one like the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the past. 
in the current and never would there be anyone like the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the future. Ab meri nigaho mein jachta nahi koi kyunke jaysay mere sarkar hai aisa nahi koi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us all to the beautiful city of Makkatul Mukarrama and Madinatul Munawwara. Zadaha Allahu sharafun wa ta'zima. We are discussing the blessings of this great personality in Islam. And as I mentioned before as well, dear viewers on the Sabadini channel, the history of Islam is filled with the sacrifices rendered by the companions. Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'een. Study the life of each companion, you would see it's filled with such beautiful and amazing attributes. Even historians are buckled, mind buckled as to how have they spread Islam or how did Islam spread throughout the surface of this earth within such a short span of time. It is due to the sacrifices that these great men and women had rendered for Islam leaving behind every single thing, leaving behind their hopes, their wishes, their dreams. And with one mission, they strived and worked very hard. And that was to convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Ek sahabi ke hawale se kaha jata hai ki aap jab kisi mulk ko aapne fatah kiya, تو آپ دریا کو دیکھ کر کے فرما رہے تھے یہ ایک سمری ہے ایک this is the summary and the مفہوم of this beautiful and amazing story that this great personality says کہ اگر مجھے پتا ہوتا کہ if there is land and there are people that are living on the other end of this river پھر میں اس جگہ کو نہ چھوڑتا میں وہاں تک بھی پہنچ کر کے Islam ko aam karta. I would have went there on the other end of this river and I would have conveyed the message of Allah Azza wa and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa That is to show how passionate they were to spread Islam and to take light into the home of every person. Likewise, from amongst the list of Sahabiyat, this is a great name who is the daughter of Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the beloved sister of Hazrat Sayyidina Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha and she is none other than Hazrat Sayyidatuna Asma binti Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Great Sahabiyah in Islam who had rendered lots and lots of sacrifices dear viewers and listeners of Madhini Channel. Her life is filled with such amazing aspects that will of course benefit our sisters out there and uh, us as well to see how she radiyallahu ta'ala anha had served the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how she did not complain about any taklif and any problem that she have endured rather she patiently you know um, passed her time without any complaints and she had done that which Allah azza wa jal and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had commanded her to do so she is a very famous sahabiya in Islam as well, as we all know, the incident of uh, Subhanallah migration from Makkatul Mukarrama and Madinatul Munawwara, when the Prophet of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala finally had given this news to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu with relation to his migration to Madinatul Munawwara as Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu was patiently waiting for this khabar and news to come but he knew that of course Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will come with this glad tidings for he is waiting for the, you know the hukum and order to be given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and finally when Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one night had given this news to Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. So therefore, this great personality, Siddiq Akbar radiyallahu anhu and the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his khadim as well, had set out on migration to Madinatul Munawwara. They set on on this journey and it was a responsibility about three miles away from Makkatul Mukarrama was a mountainous area and in that uh, mountainous area there was a cave known as Ghari Thawr. We all know in the Islamic history, Rasul Karam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyiduna Siddiqui Akbar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and his khadim were all present in Ghari Thawr, in the cave of Thawr. And Sayyiduna Asma binti Abu Gur Siddiqui radiyallahu ta'ala anhu's responsibility was that for three days, 
continuously she would prepare food in her home and she would take that food and go and deliver it to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to her beloved father. As we all know, you have read in Islamic history that Abu Jahl and the people of Makkah al-Mukarramah were mm. bloodthirsty for the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa They could not leave any stone unturned in regards of searching for him. They looked everywhere high and low. And Asma bint Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu's responsibility was to make sure that there's enough food supply in the cave for the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and her father. So furthermore, that when Rasul Pak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa came near Masjid Quba, then the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited a group that included his blessed daughters and Asma radiyallahu ta'ala anha accompanied them. She also migrated, she also traveled. Subhanallah. And it is mentioned that when she reached there, she even given birth to her child. After migration, this was. And this was the first child to be born from the Muhajireen that traveled from Makkah al-Mukarramah to Madinat al-Munawwara. Hazrat Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Zubair radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was the uh, son of Asma bint Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And she, this child is so fortunate. Imagine that this is the daughter of such a great companion who is the companion of Ghari Thawr, companion even to date in the Mubarak uh, chamber of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the closest companion to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And furthermore, Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu is that fortunate child that as he was born, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chewed on a date that was rubbed on his palate. And thereafter, he given that to this little child to eat. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So, Hazrat Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Zubair radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma grew up to be a very righteous, a very handsome and a very strong wari of Islam. Subhanallah. Likewise was the sister of Asma bint Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that she had also uh, sacrificed, uh, you know, everything that she had for Islam. Furthermore, it has been mentioned the real tolerance for her husband Hazrat Sayyidina Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in the initial stages of his marriage, she herself narrates and says, when I was married to this great personality, it was not that he had much on his name besides a camel through which I used to draw water from the, from the well. And he had a horse which I used to provide fodder to. And besides this, there was nothing really on his name to say that this was his belongings. But no way you would find that Asma bint Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anha had ever cried about her poverty, had cried about uh, not having much wealth in this dunya, but through the blessings of sacrificing everything behind for when she had migrated, it has been mentioned that Hazrat Sayyidina Zubair radiyallahu ta'ala anhu had left everything that once he had established before migration, everything was left behind in Makkah al-Mukarramah and just traveled with his actions, with his love for the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Madinat al munawwara and started a new life altogether. And after the birth of their child, their life had changed in Madinat al munawwara So yes, dear viewers and listeners of Madinat channel, it has been mentioned that she, radiallahu ta'ala anha, had a very long life. Approximately 100 years was her earthly life. She is buried in the Jannat al mualla which is near Makkah al mukarramah Many companions and many great awliya Allahs are buried in this beautiful cemetery near Makkah al mukarramah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for her sake forgive us our major and minor sins. It has been mentioned by her son, Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that my mother was a very devoted and generous woman in Islam. In terms of her generosity, I'm sure we have heard before as well in relation to the generosity of her sister, Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. Not one, not two, but there are several accounts that speaks about the generosity of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa gharana. And this was their style and this was their andaz. Though she is the sister of Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, but Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that my mother would sacrifice everything for Islam. She would often say to people that the real richness in this world is the richness of one's heart. Allahu Akbar. She would motivate people to donate and give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving used to inspire her or used to make her happy. 
according to Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And subhanallah, this is such a great lesson out there for us dear viewers, especially for the Islamic sisters. We have gold, we have silver, we have jewels, we have clothes, perhaps the cupboards, and there are extra baggages and storages filled with clothing, with dresses, with shoes and cloaks and whatnot. Don't we have the tawfiq? Aren't we inspired by the lifestyle of the sahabiyat? These great individuals who had nothing left for themselves. Everything was given in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would wish to keep nothing behind. To this extent that once 70,000 dinars, dirhams were given to Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha as a gift. And she began to distribute that amongst the ghuraba, amongst the poor, amongst the destitutes in Madinat al Munawwara. After she had distributed everything, Allahu Akbar, she was asked, didn't you keep something else, some dirham for yourself, at least one dirham? You are fasting today, aaj tum roze se ho. You could have opened your fast with that one dirham at least. You could have used that to buy yourself some food to eat in order for you to open your fast. And look at the answer of Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. She says, well, had you reminded me before to keep something for myself, I would have done so. Tum abhi ho? You are saying this now that I should have saved a dirham. Had you said this before, I would have perhaps did that. But no problem. I have distributed every penny, every cent. In other words, every dirham and dinar in the path and in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what pleased them, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel. Subhanallah. And there is no other reason but this that the poet says so beautifully. Mustafa ka gharana salamat rahe Mustafa ka gharana salamat rahe Mustafa ka gharana salamat rahe Qadri astana Salamat rahe Qadri Aastana Salamat rahe Haapal rahe Hai jahaan se ye do No jahaan Pal rahe Hai jahaan se Ye do no jahaan سخی آستانہ سلامت رہے وہ سخی آستانہ سلامت رہے وہ سخی آستانہ سلامت رہے قادری آستانہ our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa takes oath by this and says that this is one thing I take oath on that the wealth of the one who, who gives in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever decreases. It will never decrease but rather your wealth will increase when you give in the way of Allah azza wa jal. Our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given guarantee for this and this is that tongue for which Allah Hazrat says, وہ زبا جس کو سب کن کی کنجی کہے اس کی نافذ حکومت پہ لاکھو سلام مصطفیٰ جان رحمت پہ لاکھو سلام شمع بزم ہدایت پہ لاکھو سلام We are so fortunate with the very same زبانِ کریم As the Quran says, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْحَوَى اِنْ هُوَا إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Our beloved Nabi صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم speaks nothing except for what is told to him to speak, the wahi and the revelation which is revealed upon him. Allahu Akbar. And it is from the same zabani kareem, from the blessed tongue of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa that your wealth will not increase, uh, decrease, it will rather increase when you give in the way of Allah azza wa jal. So let's not feel shy inshallah. Let's be inspired and motivated. Let's gain some uh, aspiration from these great sahabiyat. If you look on the men section from the men folk, subhanallah, you would find such great 
leaders and such examples that they have set that people will follow till the day of judgment. From the Islamic sisters as well, from the Sahabiyat as well, you will find ek se ek, hiri hai, ek se ek, moti hai, Allahu Akbar. Our time will come to an end, but speaking about the lives of these great Sahabiyat of Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa will not end. So, on the other hand, Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu speaks about the worship of his mother, that she would spend all night worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never seen complaining, never heard complaining about her life, about the hardships that she have endured, the difficulties she went through before migration, her full support in the early days of Islam. According to some narrations, she was the 18th woman to accept Islam or 18th person in general to accept Islam. During the early days of Islam, she accepted Islam, subhanAllah. And after coming into the folds of Islam, though she was also tortured and she was worried by the kuffar of Makkah al -Mukarramah. when she returned back from Ghari Thawr after giving food to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she was stopped by Abu Jahl but she did not reveal the secret she kept this within her heart she knew that the life of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa is most important to me I can sacrifice everything I have upon the life of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mere paas jo kuch hai wa sab sarkar ka sadqa though Abu Jahl hit her Though Abu Jahl beat her and Abu Jahl was bloodthirsty and he wanted her to reveal the whereabouts of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa But this great Sahabiyah did not disclose this. In other words, she was trying to say what Allah rahmatullahi ta'ala has expressed in his poetry. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Okay, so we are discussing the worship and the ibadah, the taqwa and piety of Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha. Okay, so we also heard that she belongs to a very rich family. Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a very successful businessman. Though she came from a very good background, a very, uh, I would say, uh, you know, okay to do background in terms of wealth, but still she lived a life filled of simplicity. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us abundantly, dear viewers and this Badani channel, and forgive us through the sadqa of this great personality. So her son, Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu has mentioned that she worshipped all night, staying awake during the nights, and during the hot days, she would fast, keep roza. She would recite the Holy Qur'an Ipaq daily. She would cry whilst reciting the glorious Qur'an Ipaq. She would donate whatever she had in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanallah, though she reached the age of 90 and 100, subhanallah, at the age of, during the time of Karbala, she reached the age of 90 and by the time she passed away, her memory was still so strong that subhanallah, she had narrated over around 58 ahadith. 58 ahadith are narrated by Hazrat Sayyiduna Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha. And she still had her original set of teeth even in her last stages of life. Strong personality, motivated personality. Allahu Akbar, who never feared but to stand up for haq. She never feared sacrificing everything she had for Islam. The question here, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, we as male folk, brothers out there, who are husbands out there, fathers out there, our Islamic sisters needs to be empowered. They should learn about the lives of 
the Sahabiyat of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the family members of Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How they led their lives. Gain some motivation. We complain after having maids in our homes. Some of us have over two, three maids. Kaam kalne wale ghar pe mojood hai. Khuddam ke surat mein, khadimo ke surat mein, ghar ke kaam kaaj wo kar rahe hote. Lekin phir bhi, we complain to our husbands ki hamare paas time nahi hota hai. Some of them would even cook the food on behalf of the wife. Phir bhi, na khana pakana hota hai, na ghar saaf karna padta hai. Then too, we do not find to read, time to read our salah. Then to our sisters are seen complaining that they do not have any barakah and blessings in the day. They are unable to, you know, uh, do the, the household work when they even have people to do it for them. So let's be inspired and let's learn to be content with whatever we have. Any, any wife that complains to her husband after her husband has tried everything in his capability to provide, such a woman is cursed for she would complain and she would deny all the other benefits and blessings which she received through her husband. And how often do we do this? Our sisters are seen complaining. Such complaints are seen from the Islamic sisters out there. They complain about financial situations. They complain about not being, you know, not being bought any gifts, or any presents or any clothing. And not taken for holidays here and there. So we should be appreciative for whatever we have received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our spouses, through our husbands. Make shukr and be content and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever you have received. This is the way to open the doors of more blessings. Inshallah, we are going to be listening to a Madani Gulasta, uh, none other than Kaniz of Fatima, which is the cartoon department of Dawat Islami, mashallah. Look at the, the, the idea behind this, mashallah, ki ab to hazaro bachche jo ghalat cartoons dekh rahe hote the. They used to be watching the wrong cartoons in which they would learn how to use vulgar languages. They would learn and get bad ideas from Subhanallah. Dawat Islami has brought to you uh, Ghulam Rasul, Kaniz Fatima and they are very famous now, mashallah. Look at your screens and watch this beautiful uh, three minutes video clip, inshallah, that will speak uh, enlightening us, inshallah. Let us learn something from Kaniz Fatima and uh, let your children also watch them, inshallah. You can go onto the YouTube channel and you can find these cartoons on the social media as well share this for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Taniz Fatima Achi Machi Taniz Fatima Achi Machi Sachi 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 Hold on a sec Raika what are you doing I'm just washing God are you washing up or wasting water? Do you know that water is a great blessing of Allah Almighty? Don't waste water. On Judgment mm. Day, we will be held to account of our blessings. It's stated in the Quran, Summa latus alunna yawma izin anin na'im. Meaning, then on that day, you will most certainly be asked about blessings. Therefore, do not waste a great blessing like water. Raika, have a look who's at the door. Hold on a sec, I'm just coming. Just a second. Who is it? It's me, Rameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, Sister Rameen. Please come inside. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, ala kulli hal. I can't see Kaneez Fatima. Where is she? She's in the kitchen. Let me call her. Please have a seat. Sister, yeah. your mean sister is here. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, ala kulli hal. Where are you going holding this shopping bag in your hand? No, nowhere. I wasn't going anywhere. Well, what actually happened was our fridge stopped working and these things would go off without being in the fridge. So I came here to ask you if I can keep these things in your fridge for a few days. Sure, why not? But let me first ask my dad. Of course, dear. You may do so. Helping out others is a great deed. Yes, Ramin, you can use our fridge. I've asked my dad. Jazakallahu khaira. Mmm, these look like yummy things to eat. 
These are all the things. Please keep them in your fridge. Our fridge will also be repaired in one or two days. Mmm, yummy. Right, Harry, the dwarf going to sleep. Allahumma bismika amudu wa ahya. Hmm? on your face and your hands. Would you like to explain that? Um, I was... Look, Raika, do not lie. Lying is a very bad thing. Oh. Secondly, Ramin kept this chocolate as an interest with us. The summary of a hadith is that he is not from amongst us who is dishonest with believers. Dishonesty in trust? What does that mean? Someone keeping their belongings as an interest with us is entrustment. And using that entrustment without his permission is dishonesty in the entrustment. Sister, I will never lie again or be dishonest in anyone's trust. Now the chocolate you have eaten, you have to buy a new one and replace it. And when Ramin comes tomorrow, apologize to her as well. Sure, inshallah. That's what I will do. Okay, let's go to sleep now. Ramin, we wanted to apologize to you as well. Apologize? What for? Actually, what happened was that Raika ate some chocolate from it, but I did replace it by buying a new one. Sister Ramin, please forgive me for the mistake that I have made. Hmm, no problem. My mum said that. Give one chocolate to Raika as well. Jazakallah <laughs> khairan. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, welcome back to your viewers. This was Kaniz Fatima and uh, her Madani pearls, MashaAllah. We have come to the end of our program as well as to the end of this week's program. And indeed, we will return through the karam, through the fadl and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua for the prosperity of Madani channel. Uh, convey this message to others as well for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I sign off as I do every other day with the missionary statement of Da'wat Islami and that is I must strive to reform myself and the people of the entire world. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Remembrance of